discussing and debating the measure before us. Recognize Senator Frank Morris, please. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Democrats, for saving me the opportunity to speak. And uh, well, thank you. And maybe needlessly, obviously, uh, prolonging the agony of this moment. But I, I think there are some things I'd like to share, um, and it comes from the perspective. And, and I know that there is not one member of this assembly, in either the House or the Senate that doesn't care about children, that doesn't care about the misfortunate folks that need public assistance, that doesn't care about public safety, that doesn't care about higher education. We all care about that deeply. The division comes from how do you solve the problem that we have today? And the fundamental place that you start and by way by which we will be judged by the public outside of this building is how we solve this problem. There has been from day one a rush to taxes in this assembly. And that's not the first step to solving a problem. If we get to the point where you need taxes, I will be there to vote. And I have done that in the past. I am not afraid of voting for taxes. But there are certain things that are precedent that must occur before you go down that road of taxation, increasing taxes. Number one, what do you do in an organization when you're in financial exigency? You look at your costs. You look at your cost basis. How do you reduce the cost basis of that organization? If you're in a car dealership and your sales are down, you figure out how to do it with two people instead of three. In the aggregate business, it's the same way. And that's how the public will judge the performance of this legislature. What have we done to reduce the cost basis without reducing service to the public? The first thing that the public receives is a reduction in service. It is not a reduction in cost. Now let's, let's just pick an example. We all receive PEB in this building, every one of us. How much do we pay for our health insurance? Zero. We pay none. How many states within this great United States offer health insurance without asking for participation in covering that cost. State of Oregon. There's a huge cost issue. And the public outside of this building will look at what we do here today and say, has the Oregon legislature dealt with the issue of cost? Can we answer that question in the affirmative? And we've not done those things. Now, I recognize this is the legislative body, and you have the executive branch. We need to be working together on this issue of reducing costs. The way we're reducing costs today is we are taking furloughs. And how is that translated to the public? It's a reduction in service to the public. And when the public does not get the service, they're angry. They are angry. And it builds that cynicism that the public has so deeply held for this body and the things that we do. The second thing that you need to do in a financial exigency is you need to look at all your resources, all the resources that are available to you to solve this problem. Have we done that? Have we looked at all available resources before we have gone down the path of increasing taxes? I don't think we have, Mr. President and colleagues. Let me just give you an example. My good friend and the Chair of Revenue, we're looking at Betsy. We granted the most excessive tax credits in the history of this nation in the 07 session. 
to the tune of the expected cost in direct grants from the Oregon Treasury of $150 million in this upcoming session. Now, we've been working in revenue to try to bring that back into balance. Friends, what is more important? Keeping seniors in their home, children in school, higher education supported, and public safety. What's more important, to do that or to build windmills? You've got to look at the priorities, and you've got to look at available resources, all available resources. There's nothing that would prohibit us from suspending. Let the pipeline come up to a point and then suspend for 24 months those Betsy credits for windmills that would generate 75 to $100 million dollars of resources that we would have available here to fund those vital services. Have we done that, or will we do that? No, we have not. So in the final analysis, when this is all said and done, what we will have is the public looking at us and saying, have you reduced cost and tried to maintain service? Have you done that? And the second thing is they will look at all of these available resources and have you utilized those before you have asked for taxes. Colleagues, also, I, I would just have to share with you, to come to the point we are today and have never had the discussion about meaningful, comprehensive tax reform is a sad day. For some, they believe that this is tax reform. Soak the rich and tax business. Colleagues, that's not tax reform. We have a bill and have had a bill, two of them in fact, to look at building a meaningful rainy day fund. Colleagues, we had in November of 2007, we passed out $1.12 billion in kicker returns. Now, I know that I'm going to tread on my colleagues' toes on my side of the aisle, but we don't have to keep doing this to ourselves. Of that $1.12 billion, had we saved that, not to grow government, but saved it for times like this, Colleagues, we've failed. We have failed in our job. We have not provided the leadership. We have not come together and found that common ground that said, we are going to build a financial foundation for this state that will survive into the future, and we can manage the volatility. If you don't want to do tax reform, for God's sake, at least save the money for times like this. And we haven't done it. So now we've come to this point in time where we're going to pass these tax increases. There's a better way. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you.